Okay, welcome back. I'm Robert Breaker, and our sermon for this week will be on this topic. How much longer until Jesus comes back? How much longer till Jesus returns? I get a lot of emails from people asking that question. How much longer? I just can't wait. Well, I hear you. I don't profess to know the day of when Jesus will return, but I want to talk about that subject today. How much longer till Jesus comes back? What does the Bible say? And and I get a lot of emails from people, and this is what's fun to me is, Brother Breaker, what do you think? Well, I'm thinking this. What do you think? Have you read this verse? And there's all these people that are looking for the return of Jesus Christ, and they love to talk about it and discuss it and go over scriptures together. And I love that. I love a good Bible study. So I said, you know what? Let's do that. Let's have another Bible study on this subject of when is Jesus coming back. Now, before we begin, let me say this. I am not, nor will I, in this video setting the date of the rapture. So I hate to disappoint you if all you do is watch me just to attack me. You're not going to be able to attack Robert Breaker from this video, okay? So go ahead and tune into something else or go do whatever you need to do. This video is not for you. I have noticed over the years there are two different kinds of people that watch Robert Breaker. Those who watch because they want to learn something, they want to know what the Bible says, and they enjoy the scriptures and, and studying the Bible with me. And then those that are just nitpicking and just looking for something that they can take and they can twist and they can turn. And something that they can take out of context in order to attack Robert Breaker. If you're one of those, would you just please go watch something else? <laughs> no, I'm not going to attempt to uh, set the date of the rapture in this video. As a matter of fact, I've never set the date of the rapture. But yet the latest thing I've heard is people are coming out and lying about Robert Breaker and saying, Robert Breaker's a date setter. <laughs> no, I'm not a Harold Camping. I saw what Harold Camping did, what was it, 2000 and I don't remember the date, 11 or something like that, in which he came out and told the whole world on such and such a day, Jesus Christ will return at the rapture. And it didn't happen. And how the world laughed and mocked him and made fun of him. And rightly so. He was a false prophet. He said, on such and such a day, thus saith the Lord, the Lord will come back on such and such a day. And he didn't. So he was wrong. But I've had people lie about me, Robert Breaker, and say, well, Robert Breaker, why, he's a date setter. And I go, really? Why would you? Okay. Uh, why would you say that? And they say, well, you made a September 23rd, 2015 video, and you made a September 23rd, 2017 video. And those were the two dates that you thought Jesus was coming back. And I'm like, wow. Have you ever seen those videos? And if so, did you read the description? In the description, I went ahead and wrote it down, on the September 23rd, 2015, disclaimer, this video in no way attempts to date the rapture. In the September 23rd, 2017 video, disclaimer, this video in no way attempts to date the rapture. Rather, it seeks only to present what many are presenting on the internet about possible, event, uh, possible events that may take place in the near future. You see, what I did is I went and I uh, found some things on the internet. Uh, there was a lot of interesting things, and I said, well, there's a lot of people talking about the Bible and the coming of Jesus Christ in the end days. And a lot of them are thinking that he might come at this time. A lot of them think it might be this time. And I said, you know what, I'm going to be like a reporter. I'm going to take a lot of the things that they're saying and just kind of put it all together in one place. And a lot of people have told me, Brother Breaker, I've gone back to those videos, the 2015, September 23rd, September 23rd, 2017 video, because you have so much information there that I can go back and look up and, and see that still pertain to today and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I have never said a day of the rapture, and I never will. I don't plan on it. I was thinking the other day, even if I knew the date of the rapture, I wouldn't tell people. No, I'd probably keep that to myself. And then just do my best to keep preaching and teaching and be faithful until he comes. But I can't wait for the rapture of the church, and I'm looking forward to it. And today what I'm going to do is the same thing I did in those September 23rd videos. I'm just going to show you what people are thinking. I get a lot of emails from different people, and they say, Brother Breaker, my thought is the rapture might be in this year. Or others, well, I think it might. So I say, okay, well, I think I have about five or six different ideas that people have come up with of when they think the rapture may or may not be. But you know what I will not do in this video? I will not give you a day in which I think it's going to take place. I just want to show you what they're saying and what they're thinking and, and just have a good fun Bible study as a Christian about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So before we get started, let's go to Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2, we're just going to have a Bible study in which we speculate and we look at what the Bible says, look at modern events, look at uh, years in the Bible, Numbers. You know, there's a book in the Bible called the Book of Numbers. 
quite interesting. And we'll just come up with some stuff and just kind of think out loud is what I plan to do in this video and just give you some things that I've been thinking about, what other people have been um, showing me and asking me about as we hope and long for and look for the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Titus chapter 2 verse 11 through 13. Titus 2 11 says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Yeah, Jesus Christ died for all men. All men can be saved. We're saved by grace through faith. Verse 12, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. And yes, after we're saved, that's how we as Christians should live. We should live a sober life, a righteous life, a godly life. We should be good examples of true Christians. And then verse 13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Boy, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the soon appearing of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And you know, it's not a sin to look for Jesus coming. I'm looking for Him, and I can't wait for Him to come. And you know what? I'm not trying to set a date any way, shape, or form. I just want to keep looking and keep thinking about, you know, what if it was this time? What if, The Bible says that the, the body of Christ is the church. And you know what the church is like in the Bible? The church is likened unto a bride. And the church is like a bride. And a bride getting married. The church um, goes out at the rapture. In the rapture we go up to the marriage of, of the Lamb. What woman, when she's ready to get married, doesn't look forward to that? You know, I look forward to, to my marriage when I got married. And I was so happy and so thankful. And I just couldn't wait. And as the days got closer and closer, I was just, oh, so excited about it. Well, how come there's people out there today that claim to be Christians that they aren't excited about the coming of Jesus Christ? They say, oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. Yeah, yeah. oh, Jesus coming. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> whatever? Seriously? Uh, no? How about, I can't wait. The sooner the better, man. I can't wait. Come on. Come on back. I'm looking. I'm longing. I'm wanting your return, Jesus. Please come. And one thing I like to do is get around with other Christians and talk about the coming of of Christ. I get phone calls, I get emails, I get people all the time sending me stuff, asking me questions, saying, hey, Brother Breaker, can I share with you what I think? Oh, sure. A lot of people ask me, they say, Brother Breaker, when do you think the rapture will come? I go, oh, no, 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 I'm not going there. Oh, come on, tell me, Brother Breaker, what? And I say, honestly, it could be any time. Honestly, I think it could be this year or next year, or it could be, I'm just, I'm going to show you some of the things that people have shown me, some of the ideas I have, and I don't know. But I'll do my best to give you some possibilities. What we're going to do today, we're going to speculate. There's some people out there that make their living call, uh, called speculators. And they look at the markets and they speculate. They guess on what's going to happen. And then they, they make these guesses and then they try to make a living off of speculating, off of investing on something that they think will give them a return. Well, I don't know anybody that, that puts down speculators and says, Why, they're, they're date setters. <laughs> No. Uh, what they're doing is they're doing their best guess. Sometimes they're right, sometimes they're wrong. So what we're going to do today, we're going to speculate. We're going to look in the Bible, we're going to guess. When could the rapture possibly be? Now, I'm not setting the date, so I don't know. But I do want to show you what the Bible says. Because I do believe that the Bible does contain the mind of God. And the Bible does show us some things. And I believe that it's in the Bible somewhere when Jesus is coming back. I'm going to get to these verses. I just want to give you what the Bible says today. Amen? So let's get into this. In uh, Titus 2.13, it says, Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, I didn't read verse 14 and 15. Look at verse 14. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and to purify himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Verse 15, these things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. So there's some things in the Bible that we can speak about. And we have all authority to speak on these things. Now I just wanted to read that because I get a couple of people. Now uh, probably 20% of all the emails I get are people wanting to talk about the rapture. Brother Breaker, when do you think it's coming? I can't wait for Jesus to come back. And I say amen. But then I get... This 1%, maybe 2% of people that say, well, Robert Breaker, you should never talk about when Jesus is coming back. 
Why? It's wrong for you to try to think about when the rapture might be. We don't know when the rapture is going to be. And how dare you try to tell people that you know and you think you... And it's like, what's wrong with you? And some of them even go so far to say, you should never even talk about it. Now, wait, hold on. Who are you to tell me what I can and can't preach on according to the Word of God? When right here, the Bible tells us in verse 13 to look for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of Jesus Christ, and that I can speak about that, and I can exhort, and I can rebuke with all authority, and I don't need to let any man despise me. And I have some people out there, they despise me, and they love to attack Robert Breaker and say things about me that aren't true, and they go out of the way to say, oh, you're such a liar, why well, you date setter, you date setter. And I thought for a minute, you know, maybe I shouldn't do a video on this because then the liars will come out and say, oh, bro, Breaker's shutting a date again. But I thought, no. The Bible says these things speak with all authority. So I'm going to enjoy myself today speaking about these things. And I'm not going to give you the date of the rapture. Rather, what we're going to do is we're just going to look at some ideas. Uh, some of this is things that people sent me. Some of this comes from my own mind. But I study the Bible, I read the Bible, and I obey the Bible. And the Bible says to look for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing. So I want to give you some ideas of what the Bible says. And what the thinking of many Christians is of when Jesus is coming back. Now, I don't know for sure, but there's some ideas. And it's fun to speculate, to guess, to get an idea. Certainly we know the times and seasons, and I do believe we are in the time and the season of a very soon rapture. I'm just going to tell you how soon as we get into this. Now, I don't want to go too long. I've got a lot here. This is actually almost like three sermons in one, so I've got to go quickly, um, giving you a bunch at a time. But the question comes up, and the question is, can we know the date of the rapture? Is it in the Bible? Some people say, well, nowhere in the Bible does it ever say when Jesus will come. And I think that's interesting because Jesus told us through the prophet Daniel in the Old Testament when he was going to come the first time, born of a virgin, and when he was going to come as the prince. <laughs> so if he'd tell us the first time, why wouldn't he tell us the second time? I think that's interesting. But there's a question that comes up, can we know the date of the rapture? Well, a lot of people want to go to Matthew 24 and say, no, Matthew 24 says that we cannot ever know the day or the hour of the rapture. Okay, there's a problem with that. These people that say that are taking this verse and they always leave off the last part of the verse. And they don't go to the rest of the scripture. So let's look at this, okay? This is another lie that people have told about Robert Breaker. I just heard this one the other day. Someone says that Robert Breaker called Jesus a liar. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I've never called my Lord and Savior a liar. I don't know what that person means by that. But I go to this verse and I, I read this verse, and they don't even read it. They won't read the ended part of it, and they won't read the rest of the Bible. And they say that Robert Breaker called Jesus a liar. Well, okay, let's look at that. Let's see if there's any merit to what they're saying, if it's true or not. Matthew 24, 36. Many people love to go to this verse and say, this verse says we can never, ever know the date of the rapture. Well, is it even talking about the rapture? I'll get to that a little later. But Matthew chapter 24 and verse 36, look at what it says. Matthew 24, 36 but of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. And many people will go to this verse and say, no man knows the day or hour, no man knows the day or hour, no man knows the day or hour. When was this said? When did Jesus say this? He said it right here. Matthew chapter 28, excuse me, chapter 24, 24, and verse... 36. Jesus says this here. Where is Jesus when he's speaking this? He's in his earthly ministry. So Jesus says this, Jesus is on earth. And notice what he says. He says, No man knoweth the day or the hour, except my Father which is in heaven. Not even the angels but the Father knows. So when Jesus says, no man knoweth the day or the hour, when is he speaking? He's speaking here on earth. Does Jesus stay on earth? Is Jesus Christ still in the grave? Well, thankfully, no. The Bible tells us that Jesus rose again. 
the Bible tells us what the gospel is. The gospel is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. How that Christ died. How he died in a bloody manner. He shed his blood for our sins. Thank God. Amen. But the Bible says that Jesus Christ was buried. And then it says that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. Now where did he go when he rose again? Why well, he went to heaven with the Father. And there are many verses in John and other places where he talks about how he's going to go up to the Father again. Now, when Jesus rose from the dead and went up to heaven and sat down at the right hand of the Father, do you think that he just looked at the Father and the Father looked at him and they never spoke? And they just went, hmm, hmm, and that was it? Well, if all we had was the book of Matthew, then we could run back to this verse and say, no man knoweth the day or hour. But that's not all we have. We have more revelation. We have the revelation of Paul. Much of which was said uh, by Paul was revealed to him by Jesus Christ. We have the revelation of the book of Revelation. And in the book of Revelation, look what Revelation says. See, a lot of people, they love to run back to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and they forget, uh, yeah, but there's a lot more Bible in the New Testament after that. So when Jesus is saying, no man knoweth the day or hour, he's saying, at that time, while I'm here on earth. But Jesus went up to heaven, and I'm certain that God the Father told Jesus, God the Son, when, when the day and the hour would be. So let's look at that. Here is Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1. And Revelation 1.1 1, 1 tells us that the Father revealed some things unto the Son. Look what it says, Revelation 1.1. 1, 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Now read that again. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God, who's that? Well, that'd be God the Father, gave unto him. Who's him? Jesus, God the Son. To which unto his servants, to show things unto his servants, which must shortly come to pass. So the book of Revelation is given to us, and it's the revelation of Jesus Christ given to him by God the Father. For us, for what? to tell us of things which shortly must come to pass. So the book of Revelation is written about things that shortly will come to pass. Well, what's supposed to come to pass? Well, the rapture comes first. The next big deal on God's calendar is the rapture of the church. Do we find the rapture in the book of Revelation? I believe it's there. I believe when the door in heaven is open in chapter 4, I believe that sounds a lot like a rapture, doesn't it? Well, the book of Revelation has a lot of information. And a lot of people say, well, yeah, but the rapture is not in the book of Revelation. It doesn't say the, the day or the hour in the book of Revelation. And I go, have you? Many times people that come out and say things, it's like there's always a verse that says the opposite of what they just said. And it always makes me scratch my head and go, have they ever, have they ever read the Bible? Is there anywhere in the book of Revelation that says that we might be able to know when the rapture might be? Well, many people say, no. Okay, have you read it? I have. How about you go with me to Revelation chapter 3, verse 3? Because in Revelation chapter 3, and verse 3, we read through something quite interesting. Look at what it says. Revelation 3, 3. And in Revelation 3, 3, it says, Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch... Okay, what else does he say? If thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come unto thee. So notice what it says there. It says if you're not watching, then you won't know the hour that Jesus comes. Now what is the opposite of that? What does that mean if you are watching? Then it sounds like if the opposite is, if, is that you will know when he's coming. Did you catch that? Let me read that again. At the end of that verse, Revelation 3.3. 3. If therefore, see it's an if-then statement. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come unto thee. Okay, so if you're not watching, you won't know. What's the opposite of that? It sounds like if you are watching, then you will know. And he won't come as a thief. How about that? So it sounds like in the book of Revelation, God is saying, you know, if you're watching, if you're looking for my coming, then you just might know when I'm coming back. 
So all these people, they run to, no man know it the day or hour, no man know it the day or hour. And you look at that and you go, uh, okay. If all you want to do is run back to the book of Matthew, well, you can get in a mess because Matthew is still Old Testament until Jesus dies. So you're going to run back to an Old Testament verse and hang all your doctrine on that? How about we rightly divide? How about we read the whole entire Bible? So all they want to do is run to Matthew 24, 36, but... That's when Jesus was here on earth in his earthly ministry that he said that. I'm not calling God a liar. I'm just rightly dividing the word of truth. I'm reading the whole Bible. And I say, yeah, Jesus said that then, but later he said something else. Why don't we look at everything Jesus says, not just a statement of something that he said at a certain time back then. What was the other revelation later? And it says, well, if you're not looking, you won't know the hour. So what's the opposite of that? Well, if you are looking, you just might know the hour. So I teach that I believe that in the Bible somewhere is the rapture. I believe that the Bible does teach when the rapture will be. Now, I don't claim to have found it, but I believe God put it in there. And I believe somewhere in there. Now, can we know the date of the rapture? Well, in the Old Testament, you had these prophecies of Daniel. And God said to Daniel, he said, uh, 490 years... Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people. And 483 years passed, and then there was a last week or last seven years. And this was all talking about the coming of Jesus Christ. So if in the Old Testament God gave us the exact number of weeks until he came, why wouldn't he do the same in the New Testament? The book of Daniel has a lot in common with the book of Revelation. And what I find interesting is you go to the book of Revelation and it talks about a passage that says, and there'll be this many days, 1,260 days. If you go back here to Daniel, it says 1,260 days. I think it says 1,290 days or 1,335 days. God's giving you the number of days that are going to take place in a certain time in the tribulation. And tribulation, of course, is the final week of Daniel, final seven years, and it's divided in half. In the first three and a half years, and the last three and a half years. And you know, 1,260 days is exactly three and a half years. So people say, no, you'll never find the date of the rapture in the Bible. It's not there. And I look at my Bible and I go, but God told us that there would be this many days. <laughs> so you just double that, and you go 1,260, 1,000, and, and, and you would think that that's how easy it is, but no, it may not be that way. Because there's other places where it's 1335 or 1290 or something else. So, But why does God tell us how many days are going to take place in the future? God is a God of numbers. You know, in the Bible we have a book called the Book of Numbers. So if God told them in the Old Testament when the Messiah was coming, wouldn't God tell us in the New Testament when he's coming? Matter of fact, it's in Revelation. Revelation 12.6. Revelation 12.6 is where it talks about 1,260 days. The actual number of days that Israel's going to be in, in the tribulation in the last three and a half years, he tells us how many days exactly it's going to be. So I look at the Bible and I say, wow, these people, they, all they want to do, they're so narrow-minded that they just want to take one verse and then, and then just close their eyes and close their ears and say, no, 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 I can't hear anything else. No, 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 no. And it's like, oh, okay. So you don't even want to discuss anymore about Jesus' return and when it might be. Is that because you hate Jesus? I mean, because if I if I love the Lord Jesus Christ and I want his return, I enjoy talking about these things. <laughs> Why don't they? But let's go to Matthew chapter 24. Why is it they just want to attack? If you're saved, and I'm saved, this is something we should be excited about and enjoy speaking about because we're looking for the coming of our Savior. And we ought to be excited about it. And we ought to look into, oh, well, what do you think it could be? And we ought to enjoy discussing it. It's crazy for me to hear that there's people that don't. But let's go back to Matthew chapter 24, and verse 36. A lot of people will run to this verse, Matthew 24, 36, and they will say, Jesus said it, no man knoweth, no man knoweth the day or the hour. And they say, period. 
and you can't say anything else, shut up, you're not allowed to speak anymore, that's it. And you look at that and you go, okay, the day and the hour of what? Well, they'll say, well, he's talking about the rapture. Oh, well, mm, okay, let's read Matthew 24 and see if that's true. The whole context of Matthew chapter 24 is Jesus speaking to Jews about, guess what? The tribulation. And when you read Matthew 24, it's very hard to, to try to apply all of Matthew 24 and even this part to the rapture. Look at Matthew chapter 24, verse 34. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Who's he talking to? Verse 32, he's talking about a fig tree. He's talking about Jesus Christ in verse 29, coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. When does Jesus come in power and glory? Why? Verse 29 says, after the tribulation. So the context of Matthew chapter 24 and the day and hour that nobody knows isn't the rapture, it's Armageddon. Let me show you that. Verse 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. When does heaven and earth pass away? Way out there. It's not the end of the world, isn't the rapture. Now we're going to read here verse uh, 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no, no man, no not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. So what day is he talking about? Let's, con let's continue reading verse 46 down to 51. Blessed is that servant whom his... Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Very I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But and if it, that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of. And what will he do to him? Verse 51. And shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites, there shall be weeping and washing, uh, gnashing of teeth. Weep, weeping and gnashing of teeth. Weeping and gnashing of teeth, why Jesus uses that uh, expression, weeping and wailing or weeping and gnashing of teeth, with people going to hell. At Armageddon when Jesus comes back, there'll be some people that are cast into hell. And you look at Matthew chapter 24 and you go, wow, that, that whole chapter looks a lot like uh, God talking to Israel about what's going to take place in the tribulation. So, I mean, look at verse 16. 16, Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Clearly that's a tribulation passage, because it says in Revelation 12, 6, they flee into the mountains for 1,260 days. They flee into the wilderness. So, people want to come and, and they want to attack Robert Breaker and say, Robert Breaker is such a liar, no man can know the day or the hour of the rapture. And you go, oh, really? We, we're, okay, when, when, when you say no man knows the day or the hour, Prove to me that that scripture is Jesus speaking of the rapture. Because it appears Jesus is saying no man knows the dairy hour of Armageddon. So there we go, huh? <laughs> so is that what it is? So see how easy it is to take something out of context and then just call somebody a liar because you don't want to deal with it? And then continue to press forward with your false doctrine by quoting one verse out of context and misapplying it? And people do this all the time. All the time people say, well, Matthew 24, 36, well, that's talking about the rapture. And no man can know the day or hour of the rapture. And you look at it in context, you go, no, no man know the day or hour sounds like the battle of Armageddon because the chapter 24 in context is Jesus speaking to the Jews about what they're going to go through in the tribulation. And the rapture will already have taken place, so it must be talking about Armageddon. Well, if that's the case, though, how about this? Can we ever know the day or the hour of Armageddon? Well, if we ever figured out the date of Armageddon, then theoretically we can know the date of the rapture, right? We just go back seven years. Because the prophecy of Daniel is, is 490 years and 483 have taken place, so there's a final set. So if you can ever figure out when Armageddon will be, well, then you just count 1260 plus 1260 back, and then you've got the date of the rapture. And a lot of people go, that's easy. Well, there's the problem. <laughs> Matthew 24, 22, look what it says. Matthew 24, 22. Speaking about the tribulation, verse 21, For then shall be great tribulation, such as will not since the beginning of the world, to this time no never else shall be, the last three and a half years. Verse 22, And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Oh no! So somehow... The days 
are shortened here according to Matthew 24 22 so yeah so I don't know the date of Armageddon and even if I did even though no man or knows the day or hour except the Father in Heaven and well Father in Heaven probably revealed it to Jesus but if I did figure out the date of the Armageddon I still probably wouldn't find the day of the rapture because guess why because the days are shortened, so it's not going to be an exact... So, you, you get in a mess when you come to the Bible, and you go to one extreme, like Mr. Camping, and you say, I know the day of the rapture is such and such a day. Uh, no, you, you got in a mess there, buddy, because you were wrong. And you get in another extreme, and you say, I know the date of Armageddon. Now I just subtract seven years exactly, this many days, and I go back, and then guess what? Then I figured out the rapture. It's kind of hard to do. Now, with that said... Can we still figure out the day of the rapture? It sounds like no man knows the day or the hour is referring to Armageddon. And can we know that? I don't know. In the future, God revealed some things. So maybe the date of Armageddon is in the Bible. I don't know, but I haven't seen it there. I haven't figured it out yet. But what does Paul say about this? Let's go 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. God revealed some things to the Apostle Paul. And when we go to Paul, there's some, there's some clues that Paul gives about the rapture. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And these clues that Paul gives about the rapture makes it sound almost like we could figure out within very close, maybe a week or so, of when the rapture could be. Maybe even to the very day. Now I'm not saying I do, but I'm saying there's some clues in the Bible as to when the rapture will be. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1 through 4. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. All right, the day of the Lord is Armageddon. So Armageddon is the thief in the night. But then he continues by talking about, but to you, brethren, that day won't overtake you. What's that? The day of Christ. The rapture, when it comes... You won't be like, oh, I didn't realize it was coming. It's the... No, he says it's like this for the rapture. Verse 3, For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. So Paul says, I don't need to write to you the times and seasons. You already know. And it's like, no, Paul, I don't know. When is the rapture? He says, well, that's easy when they start calling peace and safety. And when you hear people start talking about peace and safety, well, then you know that it's close. Because uh, sudden destruction cometh. And you say, really? So peace and safety. And then he says, it's like a woman in travail. Well, a woman in travail, while well, she has a baby in about nine months. So does, it, does that sound like within about nine months we could figure out when the day of the rapture is? Almost sounds like that, doesn't it? I had a friend in Honduras, and I was with him when I was there a month or so ago when I was back in Honduras, and I got to see his daughter. She's like 13, 14 now. Man, how they, how they grow so fast. And uh, I remember when they got pregnant, and I remember them telling me, hey, I'm pregnant. And I said, oh, really? And how much longer? How far along are you? And they told me, and this was way back in 2006. And I said, wait a minute. Hold on. And I did the math, and I go, your baby's going to be born on 6606. And they go, oh, no, no, no. I go, no, do the math. I mean, you said you got pregnant at this time, now nine months. I said, what if your baby is born on 666? Why, it'd be the Antichrist. They, oh, no, don't say that, Brother Breaker. And I think she was only like three, four months along when I said that. Guess what day the baby was born? On 666. Six. Six, six, oh, six. <laughs> and they said, oh, it's your fault. You said it. Well, that's the only time in my life that I ever set a date and I got it right. <laughs> and I wasn't even meaning to. I was just joking. Uh, but one thing I know for sure, their child's not the Antichrist because it's a girl. It was a girl. But it's like a woman in Trevite. You know, oftentimes when a woman's pregnant, some people say, well, I think it's going to be this day. Well, I think it's going to be that. And sometimes they're right, sometimes they're wrong. But they got nine months to, to figure it out. And the closer it gets, why the closer it'll be like, oh, what if it's in a week? What? When we had our last baby, a little boy Conrad, why well, he came two weeks early. And I'll tell you what's interesting, okay? It has something to do with the moon. I don't know what it is, but the moon has something to do with the woman's pregnancy. They say the moon has something to do with the tides on the earth, with the water. 
well, when you're pregnant in the water, the, the baby's in the water. And uh, a friend of ours, um, he and his wife got pregnant the same day that we did. And we said, well, I bet we'll have our baby first. No, the, we bet we'll have our baby first. So we, 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 um, we waited and we went and, hard, and our baby came, I think it was two weeks early. And once we delivered that baby, I went outside from the birthing center and we had a midwife and I walked outside and the moon was so big and so close to the earth. And I just, I won't forget how big the moon was. And I said, man, maybe that's why it was two weeks early. It, it, it came on a full moon. Well, we got home and we called my friend that had gotten pregnant the same day, he and his wife. And we said, guess what? We beat you. And he goes, nope. And they had had their baby 23 hours before ours two weeks early and it has something to do with the moon now I'm not sure about the rapture of the church maybe it has something to do with the moons I don't know that's a lot of people on YouTube are talking about the moons and how you know on on the feasts of Israel and, how, and I'll get into that here in a minute but I just thought that was interesting how we had our baby and it came a little early but it all lined up with the moon if you old, know your Old Testament all those Old Testament feasts they line up with the moon so could the date of the rapture have something to do with the moon? I don't know. But Paul left us some clues. And in 1 Corinthians 15, 22, he says that the last trump, all right? If we could ever figure out what the last trump is, then we'd know when the rapture's coming. He said it's coming at the last trump. Some people think, well, that's that's the Feast of the Trumpet, the last blow of the trumpet, and it could be. If so, then we might, na we might know the date of the rapture. The only thing is, the Feast of Trumpets, why... It's based upon the moon, and it's one of those feasts where you don't ever know what the exact day will be until like 24 hours before, because it's the time of year when the moon is iffy, and it could be full on this day or or not quite, and you have to wait another day before it's full. It's the weirdest thing. So could the rapture be then? I don't know. In 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 1 through 4, the Apostle Paul tells us some more clues about when the rapture will be. And people say, well, nobody can ever know when the rapture's coming. And you go, well, no, there's clues in the Bible as to when it's coming. Now, I'm not giving you a day because I don't know the day. But it says in the Bible we can know, more or less, like a woman in travail. Like a woman, we know in about nine months she's going to have a baby. So it, it sounds like in the Bible that we have some clues on we can... And, the, and it sounds like the closer we get, the more it'll be just like staring us at the face. Wow. Here it comes. It's got to be like, you know, today or tomorrow or something like that. Cease and safety. And all these things are coming to pass. So let me read this for you quickly. 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 4. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, rapture, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there be a falling away first. So before the rapture can come, there's got to be apostasy, the falling away. And I've showed you many times how we are definitely in these days of apostasy. Many people in this world have fallen away from the truth of the Scripture, and they don't want to follow what the Bible says. Many have fallen into false doctrine. And then it says, And the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now notice what it says, The man of sin be revealed, comma, the son of perdition. The Bible here gives us the name of the Antichrist, and he gives two names. Why is that? Because he's called the man of sin the first three and a half years, and then he's called the son of perdition the last three and a half years. But Paul just said when he is revealed, that's when the rapture takes place. So are there some clues in the Bible of when the rapture will be? Yeah. As soon as the man of sin is revealed, well, that's what the Bible says. This is when the rapture takes place. So I don't know how that's going to happen. I don't know what that entails. I've always thought that means the, the guy that takes over the United Nations. And when they elect the man of sin, the, who will be the future Antichrist, as the head of the United Nations, that's when every Christian is going to go, okay, get ready, and then we're gone. Now how long will we be here after he's been revealed? I don't know. Now people have attacked and said, oh, Robert Breaker's waiting for the Antichrist, not for Jesus. No, I'm waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ, but I'm reading my Bible. How about you? Because that's what it says. It says right there, the falling away first and the man of sin be revealed. Okay, as soon as he's revealed as the Antichrist and he comes on the scene to rule his future seven years, as soon as he shows up, then we're gone. And so that was my thinking. I'm not sure, but sounds like he'll be the head of the United Nations because he's going to take over the world as the head ruling leader. 
and he rules for three and a half years as the man of sin. Then he's assassinated in the book of Revelation. He comes back to life as the son of perdition, Satan incarnate, and he rules the last three and a half years. Now, there are other clues in the Bible. Genesis 1.14 says God gave the, the stars for lights and times and seasons and days and hours. And Paul says, look, I don't need to write unto you as, as unto you know, people that don't know. He said, you already know the times and the seasons and things like that. So did God give the stars in heaven as a calendar? Well, it sounds like it because he says it was for days and years and times. And I'm not going to get into Revelation chapter 12, but Revelation chapter 12, verses 1 through 2, in 2017, there was this thing up in the constellation Virgo that looked like a woman, and this thing happened. And in Revelation 12, it talks about a woman in heaven travailing in birth. <laughs> wow, that, that sounds like Thessalonians chapter 5, where Paul talks about a woman in travail. And we look at that and we go, huh, could it be that Jesus is coming back? Is, is this all tying together? Well, I don't want to get too deep into it. I've made other videos about it. But I teach that somewhere in the Bible, it's there. And I think the closer that we get to the rapture, the clearer it'll be. And every day, more and more people are bringing more out and saying, Hey, how about this? i got a guy that calls me on the phone who used to be in the Navy, and he was a code breaker in the Navy. And he's going through his Bible, he's counting up every time a certain word shows up, and, and he's pulling things out of the Bible, and he's going through this stuff. It's blowing my mind. It's like, wow! God is a God of numbers, and numbers have meanings, and there's things in the Bible. There's so many times that this word shows up, and so many times that that word shows up. And the Bible's so, so detailed in the Old Testament with, with Moses and the children of Israel. And on this day, on the such and such day of, of this month, they did this. And we look at that, and we see how that lines up with other things in the Bible that are a type of the rapture, like, like, um, like the Noah's flood and things like that. And you look at that, and you go, man, I bet you... God has hidden in there the date of the rapture. And if we just study our Bibles, we'll see it. Now, I don't claim to have seen it, but uh, I believe there's a lot of stuff in the Bible. So, I do think that the Bible shows us just exactly what time and what season we're in. And as we study the Bible, we see just how close we are, just how close we are to the rapture. Hosea chapter 6, verse 1 through 2. God is speaking to Israel. And in Hosea... We have a prophecy. You know, the Old Testament is full of prophets, and they're prophesying. And in Hosea chapter 6, notice what we read here. Hosea chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn and he will heal us. He hath smitten and he will bind us up. After two days he will revive us, and the third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Now, 2 Peter 3 8. Peter says in 2 Peter 3 8. A day with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. So a thousand years in God's sight is like one day. And one day for God is like a thousand years for us. So when Hosea says after two days, wouldn't two days be two thousand years? Well, when was Jesus born? Jesus was born here in 0 A.D. So in 0 A.D., uh, he died in 33 A.D. So that would put us out here somewhere around 2033. I guess I'll put it down here. 2033. That would be 2,000 years. Or the year 2000 from when he was born. Well, must be going by when he died in the book of Daniel, when he was cut off. So 2033. So if the Bible is legit, and it seems to be, all the prophecies have come to pass so far, and this prophecy is God will go back to dealing with the nation of Israel after two days. Well, here we are looking at our Bibles and we're like, wow, we're, we're almost there. Because from 33 AD to 2033, that's 2,000 years. And so 2,000 years have just passed. So God's going back to dealing with Israel. And you know what's interesting? In 1948, they became a nation again. And in 2018, they celebrated 70 years as a nation. What's interesting to me back here, why with Moses, the children of Israel, they left Egypt, and they were 40 years in the wilderness. And that was, the, 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 that was because of their murmuring and their complaining and their sinning against God. God says, okay, 40 years of probation. Well, here, the Messiah shows up according to the Old Testament, in which God gave them how many days it would be before he showed up. They should have known. Hey, guess what? 
Here, they rejected the Messiah. Well, this time, instead of 40 years, it was 40 jubilees. And God deals with the Israel with jubilees, with 50 years. Every 50 years. Well, 50 times 40 is 2,000. Isn't that something? So 50 years times 40 is 2,000 years. 50, uh, 40 jubilees. Isn't that interesting? So you got 40 years in the wilderness, and the moral of that story is don't make God mad. Because <laughs> he will uh, times the... The, the suffering on you that he did the first time if you disobey. So here we have the Bible laid out. And I can't tell you when Jesus is coming back. I don't know what day. But as I read my Bible, I keep asking, how much longer till Jesus comes back? And I'm looking at history. I'm looking at dates. I'm looking at how things are happening. I'm like, man, it's got to be soon. It's got to be soon. I've got several theories here. Let me just throw these up here. When is Jesus coming back? Some theories that people have given me over the years that I'm like, oh, well, is that plausible? Is that something that could be? Here's the first theory, okay? The first theory is this. 2040 rapture? Now, that's after the 2,000 years. But they say, well, 2,000 years of waiting would be 2033. Then you add 7 to that, that'd be 2040. And they say 2040 would be Armageddon. Because you have seven years. So they say rapture 2033. I put 2040. Rapture 2033. Well, that's a long ways off. <laughs> I'd sure hate to wait that long. How many years is that? Well, this is 2019. So that's what, 14 years from now? Yeah, that's a long time. Well, I'd sure hate to wait 14 years. Of course, maybe there's something to that. That's quite interesting because when Joseph was in Egypt, and Joseph is a type of the Jews in the tribulation, why we look at Joseph, and in the time of Joseph there were seven good years and then seven bad years. Well, the seven bad years is the type of the tribulation. Seven years. So seven good years before that, well, that's, yeah, that, that kind of, and, and you know, some of these things they just logically go, well, that makes sense. But is that the way that God did it? I don't know. See, we're looking at things through our carnal mind, trying to figure it out. And sometimes we get it right. Sometimes we're just like, oh, I don't know. So that's theory number one. People think, well, 2033 rapture. The second theory that I get emails of people talking about, and that's what most of this is, although some of this is stuff I've thought about, is a 2026 rapture. Could the rapture be in 2026? Here they go to 2033 as the 2,000 years, subtract 7, and you come up with 2026. If the rapture is in 2026, well, that's only, what, 7 years away. Well, that'd be interesting. That'd be very interesting. Um, the third theory or idea that people have is a 2022 rapture. Well, that's even better. That's only three years away. Wouldn't that be nice? Of course, it would be pretty far away. I'm hoping the Lord comes back sooner than that. But the way they get that, 2022, is they say the calendar is off four years. And you go back and you read Bishop Usher. Why old Bishop Usher says, no, the calendar's off four years. So that would take you to 2022. And he says the calendar is off four years. Well, I don't know. I don't know about that. The other idea is, well, a 2021 rapture. Well, that's interesting because that's 7 plus 7 plus 7 is 21. And we're in the 21st century right now. And a lot of people say, if you know God, God loves the number 7. I've had people tell me, Jesus is 777. I'm like, okay, all right, I don't know where you get that from, but okay. And so they say 2021, well, that's 777. That works out perfectly. And you say, okay, all right. You add 7 to 2021, well, that's 2028. Well, that's divisible by 7. Well, sometime in 2028 might be the Battle of Armageddon. And God likes the number 7. Okay, that's a possibility. I don't know. You see, I, the more I study, the more I know what I don't know. <laughs> but I like to look at possibilities. I like to wonder. I like to ask, huh, could it be this? Could it be this? Other people say, well, it's a 2020 rapture. The rapture is going to be next year in 2020. And you say, okay, why do you say that? Well, because perfect vision is 2020. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Isn't that weird? When we have perfect vision, it's not, hey, your vision's 100. No, you have 2020 vision. 
Well, the year 2020 would be a great day to see Jesus coming in the clouds, wouldn't it? And then other people say 2019. That would be this year. And a lot of people are saying Feast of Trumpets. Because the last trump. Well, I looked up Feast of Trumpets, and it came out to September something. Or oh, what? Or October 1st. So sometime between September uh, 30th to October 1st is what people say. Now let me put question mark there so no one will think I'm setting the date of the rapture. I'm not saying the rapture will be on September 30th of 2019. I'm not saying that. I'm saying there are people that are throwing that out there and saying, I wonder, I wonder if... <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Okay, it's an interesting thing to think. But you got to think about it. You need to think about the coming of Jesus Christ because He promised He was coming and He said, watch. Watch for His coming. Now, an interesting thought about 2019 rapture is this. 2018, Israel became an, uh, uh, 70 years as a nation. 2019 would be the 71st year of Israel. And I've had people send me this verse. Go to Jeremiah chapter 29. And they say, Brother Breaker, in the Old Testament, why... Um, God dealt with Israel and gave them 70 years of captivity or going through bad stuff. And then he says in Jeremiah 29.10, after the 70 years. Look what he says, Jeremiah 29.10. For thus saith the Lord that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. So God says after 70 years, that's when he begins down. Well, 2018, they celebrated 70 years. 2019, why, that's the 71st year of Israel. That'd be a great time for the tribulation to start. And it'd have to start sometime around after this or whatever. So some people are thinking the rapture could be very soon. Some people are thinking, no, it's in another year or two. I know one thing, I don't see how it could be past 2033. You've got to have that 2,000 years for that prophecy in Hosea to take place. So we're anywhere between a couple of months to 14 years away from the rapture. Depending on how you look at it, and actually depending on how God looks at it. Because the whole thing is, well, God, what are you doing and how are you going to do this? Now, there's a couple of things, what I call monkey wrenches in the works, if you will. There's a couple things to keep in mind when you're looking at this and you're trying to figure out when Jesus is coming. The first one is this. I wonder if I have room for all this. Okay. Things to keep in mind. And this is something that all over the years that I've been studying the Bible and thinking about when is Jesus coming back already, these are all things that I've had to think about and I need to throw out there and give you. First of all, is this spring versus fall rapture when I got saved I went to a certain church and everybody around there and all the other good good King James Bible believing people were talking about oh we hope the Lord's coming back we hope he's coming back and a lot of people say well do you think he's coming in the spring or do you think he's coming in the fall and some people will say well he has to come in the fall it's the Feast of Trumpets okay that's a possibility then other people said, no, it's got to be in the spring because of Song of Solomon. Oh, okay. So we go over to the Song of Solomon. Let's look at Song of Solomon. Why, it's after the book of Proverbs. And in Song of Solomon, chapter 2, people say this is the rapture and this is not in the fall. So in Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 10 through 16, we read, My beloved spake and said unto me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. There's the rapture, they say. Verse 7, the voice of my beloved, behold, he cometh leaping upon the mountains, skipping upon the hills. Rapture. But then verse 11, for lo, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear in the earth, the time of the singing of the birds is come, and the voice of the turtle is heard upon the land. When would that be? That would be spring. And let me read a little bit more here, down to verse 16. The fig tree putteth forth her green figs, and the vines with the tender grape give a good smell. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. O my dove, thou art in the clefts of the rock, in the secret places of the stairs. Let me see thy countenance, let me hear thy voice, for sweet is thy voice, and thy countenance is comely. Take us, the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. My beloved is mine, and I am his, he feedeth among the lilies. And so for years, as long as I can remember, ever since I was young, uh, preachers have been saying, you know, hey, we think it's going to be a spring rapture, sometime around Pentecost or, or, or Passover, and they say that because of Song of Solomon. 
after the winter is gone, in the time of the lilies, in the time of the flowers, and the singing of the birds. Well, that sounds like spring. But then if you listen to Paul, well, Paul says at the last trumpet, some people say, well, that's the, the Feast of Trumpets. That's 1 Corinthians 15, 15, 52, at the last trump. So that's what's kind of hard to figure out. Is it going to be a spring rapture or a fall rapture? We're still kind of scratching our head going, I don't know. I guess we'll find out when it happens, amen? But you've got people in either camp is what I'm trying to explain to you. Another thing, when you're looking at when you think the rapture will come, the other thing is, is God going by the Jewish calendar? Or the Gentile one? Alright, the Jewish calendar, according to the Jews, the Jewish calendar is 360 days. Our calendar, the Gentile calendar, is not that. The Gentile calendar is 365 and a quarter days. Because the Jews have a lunar calendar, and the Gentiles have a solar calendar. So, when you look at that, you say, well, that's not the same. The Gentile calendar has more days than the Jewish calendar. So, when I look at the Bible and I see this prophecy in Hosea of uh, 2,000 years... I say, what's the difference of 2,000 years between the Jewish calendar and the Gentile calendar? Okay, I'm not great at math. I, math is my least favorite subject. But let's do some math. The Jewish 2,000 years, and I'm running out of room up here, on the Jewish calendar comes out to 7,000, or 700, excuse me, 720,000 days. On the Gentile calendar, 2,000 years would be 7,300, uh, excuse me, I told you I hate math, 730,500 days. Now what did I do here? I took 2,000 and I multiplied it by 360. I got 7, 720,000. I took 2,000 and I multiplied it by 365.25 and I got 730,500. And these are how many days are in the Jewish calendar. How many? That's a difference of 10,500 days. Okay, what does that come out to in years? Well, on the Jewish calendar, that would be 10,500 days if you... Uh, take 360, that's 29.1 years. That's a big difference in the calendar over 2,000 years. If you take the Gentile, 365 and a quarter, that's 28.74 years. So my question is, is God using the Jewish Gentile calendar or the Gentile calendar? If God is using the Jewish calendar, then this is not the year 2019. This is actually 1990, almost. So, when we're trying to figure this out, these are the frustrating things about trying to look at when Jesus is coming back. Is it in the spring or in the fall? I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. Is God using the Jewish calendar or the Gentile calendar? There's quite a big difference between the two. Which one is God using? Is the calendar off four years or three? Four or three years, or two. There's some people who say the calendar's off by four years. Uh, some play three. Others have said two years. I don't know. Some say it's off just by one year. And the last thing here is 70 or 80 years for Israel. So I wanted to just throw this out here for you and show you the frustrating thing about trying to figure out when the rapture is. That's why I have never and never will say, oh, I figured out the day of the rapture and the day of the rapture is such and such a day. There's just so many variables. But in Matthew 24, 34, we read, this generation shall not pass until all these things be fulfilled. What is this generation? Well, that's the generation of Israel. Well, Israel came back in the land in 1947. And they declared themselves a nation. See, the UN declared, gave them a, a declaration to the land in 1947. But in 1948, they declared themselves and they formed themselves a government. So if we count from 1948 and we count 70 years, that's 2018. That's last year. Well, rapture didn't happen. But look at what it says in Psalms 90 and verse 10. Psalms 90 and verse 10 says, The days of our years... Or three score years and ten. Three score and ten is seventy. 
because the score is 20. So 3 score would be 20, 40, 60, and 10, 70. And if it be reason of strength, they be four score years. Yet in their strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. So how long is a generation? In Matthew, Jesus says that this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Well, they get their uh, government back in 1948, so it's either 70 or four score, 80. Well, 80 years would be 2028. Subtract 7 from 2028, you get 2021. Could the rapture be in 2021, the old 777? Could it be 80 years? What an interesting verse. And then we fly away. No, no, they don't. But we do at the rapture. We who are saved. Now, I'm not saying the rapture is going to be in 2021. I'm hoping it's in 2019. Boy, that'd be a blessing. But when will it be? I don't know. What I wanted to do is put up here today what the Bible says. I wanted to give you verses. I wanted to show you God's a God of numbers. God is a God of details. God is a God who gives us the number of days that are going to take place in certain times. God is a God of prophecy that in the Old Testament prophesied how many weeks or how many years it would be before He showed up the first time. Why would God not give us clues of when He's coming back the second time in the New Testament if He gave it in the Old and so, a lot of people are reading their Bibles, they're studying, they're looking at all these things, and they're trying to figure out, well, if 2033 is 2,000 years, you take away 7, well, that's 2026. But what if the calendar's off? <laughs> Four years, or, or three years, what? 2022, 2021? Could 2020? Could 2019? I don't know when the rapture will be. I don't see how it could possibly be any way past 2033. I think that would be like the longest we'd have to wait. You just don't see it in the Scriptures. So what do we need to do? Well, I've already gone an hour, but I wanted to finish this up. Could, and here's the other thing, is feast day. Feast day. Is God going to complete the rapture on one of the days of the feast? Remember, the feast days were for Jews. And the rapture was hidden, and the rapture is going to be of the church. And so, but some people think, well, it has to take place on a feast day. And it could. Because the feast days, they all tie into Christ. And it's the bride of Christ. Christ died for his bride. He shed his blood for the bride. So it could be on one of the feast days. Well, if it's on one of the feast days, then we could know the day, couldn't we? Because we know. And the only feast day that, that the Jews call the day that no man knows the day or hour is the feast day of trumpets. Because trumpets is one of those where you're kind of like, I don't know if it's this day or the next day. It just all depends on how the moon's going to show. So I don't know if we that are Christians got this right. And there's all these theories out here, and I've done my best to try to explain them to you. And, and there's all these questions. Spring or fall? Jewish calendar or Gentile? Calendar off three years or, or, or four or two? Or, or is it off at all? Seventy or eighty years? Feast day or not? Now let me close with this. What should we do until Jesus comes? Jesus is coming soon. What should we do? Well, the first thing we should do is win souls. 2 Timothy 4. 2 Timothy 4. I told you this is like three sermons in one. I should stop here, but I want to—I just want to encourage you of what you need to do until Jesus comes. It could be tomorrow. It could be 14 years from now. Or any time in between. Here's what we should do until He comes, we who are Christians. 2 Timothy 4, verse 2 through 5. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things. Be watching, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Preach the gospel. What should we do until Jesus comes? Preach. Win souls. Try to get people saved. What else should we do? Well, quickly, 1 Thessalonians 2.19. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 19. And we read there, For what is our hope, our joy, our crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at His coming? For ye are our glory and joy. Let me ask you a question. If you're saved, have you ever won someone personally to Jesus Christ? You can. 
give them the gospel and get them saved, and you will be so happy when the rapture does come because you'll take someone with you. It's important. Next thing I want to say is 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. 1 Thessalonians 3.12. We should continue to love one another. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 12 through 13. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men, even as we do toward you. To the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Let's love one another until Jesus comes. 2 Thessalonians 3, 5. A lot of people out there claim to be Christians, and they have no love. Especially today. They attack, they ridicule, they lie, they mock, they put down, and they claim to be Christians. And they do not manifest any of the fruits of the Holy Spirit of God. That's sad. That's sad. 2 Thessalonians 3, 5. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 5 says, And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and to the patient waiting for Christ. While we're waiting for Jesus, we ought to love one another. Not attack one another, not put each other down, not be mean and hateful, mean-spirited to each other. We should love. We should also wait. Spend your time waiting. I'm waiting for the Lord, but that doesn't mean I can just go sit like a bump on a log and do nothing. I'm waiting. But while I'm waiting, boy, I sure want to try to get others saved. I want to continue pressing forward and doing right and living for Jesus. Romans chapter 8, verse 23. Romans 8, 23. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. When do we get the redemption of our body? At the rapture. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, what doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that which we see not, then, we do, then do we with patience wait for it. We should be patient and patiently wait for the Lord Jesus Christ, looking for His coming, living every day like, hey, today could be the day. Every morning I wake up and get out of bed and say, okay, Lord, today's a good day. <laughs> oh, I'm waiting. Anytime, Lord. 1 Thessalonians 1.10 And to wait for His Son from heaven, whom He raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Are you waiting for Jesus? While we're waiting, we should also watch out for false brethren. And boy, there's going to be a lot more until Jesus comes. They're going to abound more and more, these false teachers trying to deceive people. But we need to watch out for them. Philippians chapter 3 warns us, warns us greatly about these false teachers. And boy, there's a lot of them. I hate it. I hate there's so many false teachers, but there are. The Bible says in Philippians 3.17, Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as you have us for an example. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you looking for the Savior up in heaven, up in glory? Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. So wait, watch for the Lord to come, but also watch out. Watch out for these false teachers that are preaching a works gospel or preaching something other than what the Bible says. And in 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 3, again, he warns us, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, that by the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. And they're out there, they're out there. There are many out there that are trying to deceive. What should we do? We should live holy and have a good testimony so that when Jesus does come, people will remember who we were when we leave and say, yeah, yeah, that, that was a Christian. And our testimony, we need to protect our testimony until Jesus comes. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19 through 26. Nevertheless, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are His. Amen. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. 
continues on there. I'll skip down to verse, well, no, let's continue reading. 20, but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and, and of earth, and of some to honor and to some to dishonor. You know, there's some people out there today claiming to be Christians, and that, yeah, they are, they're saved, but they sure are dishonorable. Boy, when the rapture comes, people go, wow, I didn't know that guy was saved. Not the way he acted. <laughs> It'd be a surprise to some people. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. I want to be that. I want to be the good testimony guy who's living holy and living for Jesus. I want to be honorable and sanctified meet for the master's use. I want God to use me until he comes. I want to get away from sin and live a holy life. How about you? Flee also youthful lust, verse 22, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Calling from the heart. But avoid, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Until the Lord comes back, I'm still praying for certain people out there that are wrong, that are falling into false doctrine, that aren't saved, or maybe they are saved, but they're just preaching the wrong thing. They've been falling into the snare of the devil. I'm praying for them. I want to see them get right. I want to see them get right. In Ephesians chapter 4, we'll close with this. Ephesians chapter 4, starting verse 24. And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Last thing I want to do before the rapture is just do wrong and get in the flesh, and then I'm used more of the devil than of the Lord. No, I want to be the kind of Christian that I'm supposed to be. Meek, kind, loving, caring, preaching the truth. Verse 28, Neither uh, let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearer. I want to edify. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. I don't want to grieve the Spirit. I want to walk in the Spirit. I want to do right. 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. What a great way to end this sermon. Jesus is coming back. When? I have no idea. Lots of ideas people have, and they've been sending them to me, and I've read my Bible and trying to figure it out, and boy, this would be the best time for me, the sooner the better. My old pastor said one time, there's not one problem that I have in this life that couldn't be fixed in less than a minute when Jesus comes back. All my trials and tribulations and problems are over. The sooner he comes, the better. But until he comes, I'm going to be faithful preaching the true gospel. I'm going to do my best to love others. I'm going to wait. I'm going to watch out for these false brethren and not fall into what they're teaching. Many today teach the tribulations not even seven years. They say it's only three and a half or something like that. They're changing the doctrine. And I'm going to do my best to live holy and please the Lord and have a good testimony. How about you? Well, that's the message. I hope it's been a blessing. Sorry it went a little long, but I wanted to get that out there. It's not wrong to look in your Bible for when Jesus is coming back. Yeah, it might be wrong to set an actual day of when the rapture is, and I haven't done that. Some will say, yeah, you said September... No, I didn't. See the question marks there? <laughs> I can't wait till September 30th comes, so we'll see. And then, we'll, then we can scratch that off and go, well, that wasn't it. It's probably one of these other ones. But we're still looking. We know one thing. It's 2,000 years and 2,000 years in 2033. I don't see how it could be after 23. Could it be 2026 if you subtract seven? I mean, all I know is he's coming back. And the sooner the better. Until he does, I want to be the type of Christian that I'm supposed to be. So hang in there, read your Bibles, study, and look for his coming. God bless you. Bye-bye.